Hello Live Wires, Heather Boyd Wire here, and today it's Tip Tuesday. Today I'm making a ring using square wire and half round wire. Thank you so much to Amber for sending me this wire in the mail. What you're going to need for this project is square wire. I'm using the 18 gauge stainless steel wrapping wire from Beadalon and the half round 20 gauge wire from Beadalon, also stainless steel. Because of the steel wire, I'm going to use my memory wire cutters. You can also make this with copper wire. I have my round pliers, flat pliers, and my ring mandrel. So I'm going to take two five inch pieces of the square wire and I'm going to take my large looping pliers and make a loop. So we're going to hold this in the middle and then we're just going to bend these around to make a size of loop that you want. So you can also do them one at a time if you prefer. And then I'm going to get my needle nose pliers and just bend this one out at as sharp an angle as I can. It's hard with the steel wire to get any kind of sharp angle. We could always touch it up after. We'll just hold it on this side and give it a little bend out. Now we can just start the bend and then separate them and then you could kind of bend that one out and just adjust them as you see fit. Just make sure they sit flat on the table. You can adjust them as you need. So now I put a four inch piece of square wire in the center and we're going to line these ones up all together and then we want to start wrapping them. So hold this in place. Take your half round wire, take the flat part of the half round wire and put it against the square wires and then just start winding this around. So just bend it up. And then if you need your flat pliers, just to pinch it in place, you can do that as you go. So you can go wrap, pinch, and then wrap, and pinch, and do it as many times as you want. Then you can get your flush cutters. Make sure not to use your best cutters and just clip that. Pinch that one down. Give it a little pinch in so it's not sticking out. Push these together and then we're going to wrap this side. Put the flat side down against the square wires and then just again bring it around and around and around and pinch it as you go. So round and round, pinch it until you have about eight rounds. So now you can clip all these little ends, clip that sort of halfway at the back. Again, don't use your best cutters and then pinch in these ends so they're not scratchy. Now to make sure these don't slide back and forth, hold it in place and just take this one, bend it up a bit, and then this one here, bend it down a bit. So that's going to make sure that doesn't move. This side too, just take this, bend it down, and then this one, and bend it up. So this is your starting point. We're going to get our ring cone. So just put it on here the size that you want and just push it around. Now if you have a steel mandrel you can hammer it as well. We're just going to make the shape here. Yeah I don't usually use this hard steel wire so this is definitely a challenge. So we'll just hold this, bring this one around, bring this one around, and then bring this one up and that one across here, this one across here, and this one across here. And you can just check to see if it's going to be about the right size. From here we could find the center point and we're just going to 
take our round pliers and bring it around. And then I'm going to get the memory wire cutters for this thicker wire. Make sure it's flush to where you want it and clip it. Careful the ends don't go flying. And then you can take your flat pliers and just bring it in and close it up. So there's one. So we'll go to the opposite side here and then same thing. We're going to do the loop. So bring it around with the round pliers. Make sure there's a bit of a gap there so you can access it with your cutters and then just see where we should cut it so it's flush. Take your memory wire cutter, give it a clip. Make sure your eyes are protected because they can fly a little bit. And then we're going to take this one in and just close up the gap. So we have that one and this one. And then we want to do the next one. So now we have our little adjustments. So we're just going to take the flat pliers and just adjust these so they sit properly. If you need to adjust them, this one was a little high up, so I kind of want to move it in there a little bit so you can actually remove a little bit of the loop to push it over a little more. So now we're just going to take the end and just move it over and then that way it'll sit in there a little better. So it's always good to put it back on the ring mandrel and push it in shape. With the steel wire I would advise putting it on a steel mandrel and giving it a little bit of a hammer. And then there you have your very cool wire wrapped ring with square wire and half round wire. So I'm doing another one with just two wires and just a half loop there. And what I did was I did the wind and then I'm just going to bring it through here and wind it just around one of the wires here to finish it off. And that way this wire won't slip back and forth. So we're going to take the flush cutters again. Don't use your best ones and then bend that down so that will sit in there and these won't move back and forth. Now we'll put it around the ring mandrel just to see about how far we should wind it. So let's just put it over here to number seven and then just bring it around. It's much easier with two wires because it's not as stiff. So we're going to bring it around and that's the beginning part of the ring. Clip it at the back. Seam on that side. Pinch your ends in so they're not scratchy. And then you can finish bringing these ones around. So just hold it in place and you can bring one of these up and one of them down. And then over here you could bring these two around here and around here. Just push them down. And then you're going to just maybe try it on and see if it's going to be the good size. That looks good. Pick your round pliers, find the center point, hold it with the round pliers, hold it in place, just bring it right around and then you can just twist it a bit if you need to. And then use your memory wire cutters because this is this 18 gauge wire is stiff. So clip it off and then just bring this one down and push it so that end sits flush. So now we're going to do one on the opposite side try to get in line with that one unless you want them more staggered which is totally fine too. We're just going to hold this, bring it around, give it a clip, take the end, push it in and bring it in so it sits right in there. Again we'll get the round pliers, bring that wire around, clip it, push it in, Bring this in a little more, push it in, take your round pliers, hold it right underneath the other one, bring this one around, clip it, and then get that to sit right in there. And now you can adjust these how you like them, just get them to sit flat. 
put it back on the ring mandrel, adjust it, hammer it if you like on a steel mandrel, and there you have a super funky uh, stainless steel ring. This little part sits flat at the back. If you do want to add a bead, you can get the half round wire and stick it on a hematite bead. You can place it on the ring and then just slide it in between those two wires. Bring it around a few times and then you could flip it and do the same on this side. Bend it around a few times. You can just clip the ends and then pinch it in with the flat pliers. Same on this side. Just pinch it in and the bead adds a nice little detail to it. So thanks so much for watching the video. Give it a big thumbs up if you liked it. Be sure to subscribe to my channel for lots more wire art and jewelry making videos. Hit the notification bell to be notified when I go live and when I post new videos. And if you'd like to share photos of your wire art and jewelry, be sure to join the Wire Makers Club on Facebook. And if you'd like to check out my work on Etsy, my husband and I specialize in custom wedding cake toppers and funky jewelry. I also have a mailing list, so if you'd like to sign up below, I'll send you my Wire Art Essentials ebook. So thanks again for watching, and we'll see you the next time.